Now, a group of German research institutes has accused the EU of playing a role in unleashing the crisis in Ukraine. They say the European Union made a mistake when presenting uh, Ukraine with an either-or choice of accepting the EU Association Agreement. Well, let's now talk to one of uh, the authors of the report, Andreas Heinemann Gruder. Andreas, thank you so much for joining us here on RT. Well, very interesting finding here. I mean, whether researchers are right or not, that this either or choice alone could have triggered a revolution. But what is your take as to the catalyst of unrest in Ukraine? There are multiple factors. Uh, most of all, they are of, the, of a domestic nature. But uh, the point is here with respect to the EU, that it pressed Ukraine for making a decision between Russia and the EU. It didn't ask for politi political support of uh, uh, EU association inside Ukraine, so half maybe of the Ukrainians were in favor of this agreement, but the other half not. So the EU approached this whole issue as if it is a bureaucratic, technocratic uh, uh, deal and didn't take the necessary politi political legitimacy uh, into account. So in that respect, it played a role. And when the Yanukovych government didn't sign, it put actually a premium on regime change and said, you know, uh, those get money who will replace the incumbent president. Well, you know, uh, many U.S. and European officials openly supported the opposition during the protest. And could this also be a factor or the reason why the unrest ended up violent? Because part of the opposition understood that they are backed by uh, Western powers and only at a very late stage, some of the uh, Western foreign ministers understood that there is more than just the ousting of the uh, incumbent president uh, at stake, that uh, the, the Ukraine may collapse, that a failing state is here. Uh, we are facing a potentially a failing state. That was recognized quite lately. I think the main message uh, that we have to derive from all this, we should not promote regime change from outside. It has to be uh, representative. It has to be democratic inside, but we shouldn't push for that from outside because otherwise we may end up with state failure, as we see in parts of Ukraine nowadays. Well, see, in light of uh, what you just uh, said, that, you know, uh, the external factors shouldn't be at play here, uh, but the EU and the U.S. have been critical of Russia over its alleged involvement in the Ukrainian crisis. But, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, the West gave a lot of assistance for Kiev. So, um, you know, uh, isn't this hypocrisy here? I mean, aren't they involved in countries' internal affairs themselves? I mean, there is hypocrisy on all sides. Uh, and of course, there is um, some legitimacy in the uh, by Russia's President Putin that uh, the Western was hypocritical with respect to uh, international law, with respect to constitutionalism in the past in many cases. But the situation is not bettered by becoming hypocritical oneself now. So I think the outcome in the end can only be that we strengthen international institutions again, like the OSCE, like the NATO Russia uh, Council, like the cooperation with the EU. And uh, the way out of this whole situation can't be that anything goes, but that we sit down and say, you know, there should be standards that have to be uh, uh, applied by everybody and not just uh, by the weaker parties. Okay, well, President Obama says historic ties uh, make uh, Russia's interest in Ukraine uh, legitimate, yet he's urging the international community to isolate Russia. So how exactly could that be a solution to the crisis? Very briefly, if you could, sir. I mean, the main concern is not currently, I think, what Russia's interests are here in Ukraine. They are on the table, but the main thing is to prevent failed statehood in eastern Ukraine to prevent this humanitarian crisis to further grow. Uh, and, and I think some mediation is necessary here, poss possibly with uh, help from outside. All right. Uh, Andreas Heinemann-Gruder, thank you so much for talking to us here on RT.